Chaos theory flies in the face of the classical concept of science. We have insisted on fragmenting the world. Science has used mathematics as a filter to simplify nature and so create laws that could predict its behavior. But we must accept that what to us may seem chaotic or random may form part of an order that we are unable to describe. Are we facing a crisis of scientific perception? Perhaps. But up to now, it has not been possible to approach chaotic systems and experiment with them. Only thanks to the fact that computers can carry out high-speed calculations are we able to observe very complex systems. Until the early 20th century, the scientific method essentially had two legs, although you could actually argue that there were three. One leg was the theoretical leg, and the other leg was the observational one, that is, the one from making observations. And sometimes they talk about three legs, because the observational leg could be divided into an experimental part, in which one carried out experiments on a system and modified the conditions of that system, and a purely observational part, in which one could not modify the system. For example, in the first case, one could study how a light bulb turns on and off, and in the second case, one could study what the properties of a star are. At the point in time in which we find ourselves right now, the scientific method has a fourth extraordinarily important leg, which has always played a subtle role, which is the leg related to computer simulation. Through computer simulations, we are able to make a computer produce an artificial evolution of a system that we can later contrast with what we observe, with what we measure experimentally or observationally. And that fourth leg of the scientific method is something that now plays an extraordinarily important role in all branches of science. The scientific method is at a crossroads. The chaos of the complex systems shows us that, even though we know the law that governs the evolution of an event, our capacity for prediction is very limited because everything influences everything. The ideal of the scientific method is very useful to us, but we should keep in mind that just as happens with the tools that our minds create, it is far from being completely objective. The problem of the scientific method is one of the most discussed and least clarified questions in the entire history of philosophy, because it is always supposed that there exists a method that will give us sure and certain knowledge. However, if one takes that in a strict sense, one is making an enormous mistake, because in reality, what one is doing is converting the process of the generation of scientific knowledge into a purely methodological process. That sort of monism, that sort of exclusion of other kinds of factors within what could be the construction of scientific knowledge, is what truly constitutes or rather what turns the scientific method into something harmful to a certain degree. Because science is determined by many, many more factors than by the purely methodological ones, and that exclusion would make us forget those other factors, or make us try to turn those factors into secondary factors. When it turns out that scientists believe things, the people who make science feel guided by their intuition, they often take tremendous risks. They break the norms. They break the rules. Can we trust a method that contradicts itself and reinvents each step? We think we can. Although the scientific method has its contradictions, until now, it is the only system that guarantees us a high level of objectivity in our approach to nature, while at the same time, protecting us from slanted or ideologized interpretations of reality. Science is a never-ending path whose last step is always on the edge of the unknown. As we build this path, it will change the way we walk it. <laughs>